good nation. If you are fed with God's knowledge, if you are fed with God's understanding, then the new man in you will prosper. What kills the new man in you, whenever the new man is not fed,
moving my God even right now you're healing my God even right now you're restoring my father all things are possible where you are all things are possible where you are Jesus all things are possible father God where you are right here and right now things are possible you are touching lies and you're gonna touch lies the more you're blessing lies and you're gonna bless lies more we give you praise and we glorify your holy name all things oh god are possible right here and right now in the mighty name of our lord jesus christ yes good afternoon and to others it's still good morning wherever you are watching us from you're once again welcome in the presence of god in jesus name yes this afternoon uh, probably this morning where you're watching us from i'm so excited because i know that the presence of god is already here and the presence of god is about to come where you are get ready for God God is gonna bless you your life is gonna be different by the time we finish off this broadcast in Jesus mighty name father God you're welcome in this place Lord Jesus you're welcome in this place Holy Spirit of God you are welcome in this place angels of God come and minister with me and also minister unto the people that are viewing in right now and those who view in later in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ yes to God be the praise to God be the glory we go straight away in the Word of God because I believe that as the Word of God is coming unto you God is gonna touch your lives and God is gonna reach where has not reached before in Jesus mighty name yes on Sunday we ended by seeing that the devil uses temptation as a weapon as his greatest weapon of binding and leading very many people into captivity but i want you to understand this however much the devil is fighting and however much the devil will fight you and however much the devil will stand to fight against you when you are in god you're gonna be an overcomer in jesus mighty name one of the things that we have realized that in in, in the book of matthew chapter 11 verses 12 that the kingdom of god suffers violence and the violent people take it by force that means that time and again you and i who are in this kingdom this kingdom advances forcefully through our lives so we must understand and know what to do in the kingdom of god remember that we are still looking at this series of the life in you the life in you which is the life of god which is salvation that you have you must know what to do in salvation and when you've known what to do in salvation you're gonna emerge to be a victorious person in this world in jesus name because whatever is born of god as first john chapter 5 verses 4 says whatsoever is born of god overcomes this world this world has already been controlled by the evil one the evil one controls this world as we've already seen in the book of first john chapter 5 verses 19 for the evil one controls this world that does not mean that he has authority over your life your life is in god that means he who is in you as the bible says in first john chapter 4 verses 4 but greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world now when you have known that you have a greater i am that means that even you must be great because daniel says chapter 11 verses 32 that the people that know their god what do they do first of all when you know your god this puts you on a standard of being a strong person in this world and when you are strong you are meant to carry out great exploits and the season is now for you to be strong for greater exploits to begin to be seen in your life so the devil uses temptations as a weapon of binding and leading people into captivity but as john as james says where we're going to begin from james chapter 1 verses 12 and we're going to use nlt version the bible says in james chapter 1 verses 12 god blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation what we've seen previously that this life that we have in god is not just a life of us being blessed every time and again seeing only good things happening to us there is also that other part of this life of you being tempted and even of you being tested but 
what we want to see God never tempts never tempts us it is the devil that tempts us yes God can test us but it is the devil who tempts us so in all the tests that your life goes through and the temptation you must endure and as you are enduring this is when the character which is a good character in us of being soldiers begins to be manifested because also God is a man of war as the Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter 15 verses 3 that the Lord the, the Lord is a man of war and the Lord is his name so if the Lord is a man of war that means in him there is a character of fighting so we are soldiers of Jesus Christ as second Timothy says chapter 2 verses 3 that therefore we must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ so there is also that other side of life we fighting against the principle we're fighting against the evil one because Ephesians says chapter 6 verses 12 in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verses 12 for we don't wrestle against flesh and blood NLT calls them enemy he calls them calls it that we don't who says that we don't fight against flesh and blood enemies so as Ephesians is saying in New King James Version chapter 6 verses 12 for we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but watch this that means that the devil also has a kingdom and his kingdom is set up upon principalities is set up upon powers upon rulers of darkness of this age upon spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places so child of God this is what I want you to understand the devil also has a kingdom and time and again he wants people to be drawn into his kingdom the reason as why he fights against you because you don't belong to his kingdom so one of the ways as to which the devil fights people who are not his who don't belong to him because definitely man was created to be an enemy and to the devil when man fell in the book of Genesis chapter 3 verses 15 God put internal enmity between man and the devil because God said that the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent and also the serpent shall bruise the heel of the seed of the woman so child of God this is what I want you to understand that devil will never be and has never been a friend to man that enmity was brought by God God created it and ever whenever the devil comes where man is he wants to destroy him do you know why you and I have been created in God's image when the devil looks at you he sees God so now when you give your life to Christ Jesus he is fighting against God himself who is inside of you but you must know how to fight you must know how to stand as a good soldier of Jesus Christ so this life that we have of salvation this life of God that we possess in us the devil will come to tempt us and as we saw over the weekend the temptations come unto everyone he also came to tempt Jesus but Jesus overcame him and because Jesus overcame and is, the ch is our champion we look unto him and also we must be overcomers in this world so the Bible is saying in the book of James where we are that blessed are those who patiently who patiently endure testing and temptation afterwards they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those that love him do you know that many times when you overcome temptation God will crown you more with his life and child of God this is what I want you to understand that we have needs in life we have what we want in life but many times the devil comes to use his temptation when we are in need when we are in want that is when also he will bring his temptation to prove that he can provide things unto your life the things that you need and want then verse 13 the Bible says and remember when you are being tempted don't say God is tempting me God is never tempted to do wrong and 
he never tempts anyone else that means that God never uses temptations over our lives yes God will test us but he will not use temptations so when you find your life in a season in a time in a moment of being tempted definitely know behind those temptation is the devil so verses 14 the Bible says temptations come now see what is so amazing temptations come from our own desires which entice us and drag us away in this life that we receive from God which is a life of salvation we are given godly responsibilities we are given godly assignments and God rewards us according to the godly responsibilities and assignments that were given unto us so God never expects you to take your eyes off your God-given assignment and responsibility that the more you concentrate on them that is when you are on the works of the kingdom of God God wants his kingdom to advance in this world through your life and the devil knows it very well so many times when he comes in to tempt us temptations come from the desires what are the desires of your life the desires of your life come as a result of what you want and what you need so now it reaches a time and people think that the more they pursue the desires of life the more they pursue what they need and what they want is the more they're gonna get great this is the more they're gonna do better in life is the more they're gonna do a lot of things in life yet there is a principle that God laid down for all of us if you want your needs to be met if you what you desire in life you want it to be fulfilled you need to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness then these other things what you desire what you need what you want is added unto you so the fight of the devil is there that is where the grounds where that is where he steps in to separate your life from doing the things of the kingdom of God and also being in the righteousness of God then you begin to concentrate on what you desire in life remember Jesus reaching a level of telling people to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness it all comes from verses 25 verses 25 of the book of Matthew the Bible says and we're gonna use NLT version see what the Bible says in NLT version this is why I tell you don't worry about everyday life so the devil is so so cunning he will come in through temptation because of your everyday life he will try to show you what your life is of every day he will say fine every day what are you doing every day what have you achieved as a person so now the Bible is trying to show us for us not to focus on our everyday life by concentrating on our desires and by concentrating on what we need and want remember this there is a God who designed you there is a God who knows you as Jeremiah says chapter 29 verses 11 he has good thoughts towards you NIV version says they are not only thoughts it goes farther he has good towards your life and these plans that God has for your life are to prosper you these plans that God has for you are not to arm you and when you step into these plans then your life begins to have hope for tomorrow which is the future that God has for your life remember as the psalmist says Psalm 31 verses 15 in NLT version that our future is in the hands of God so when he tells us in the book of Matthew where we are chapter 6 verses 25 in NLT version for us not to worry about our everyday life he is trying to avoid your life from being troubled of what you need and want I repeat it again he is trying to protect your life he is trying to protect your heart from being troubled of your everyday need from your everyday wants then he begins to show you that whether you have don't worry about your everyday life whether you have enough food to eat whether you have enough drink or enough 
uh, enough to drink or clothes to wear? Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? We've seen that this life that we receive from God, this life of salvation, it is more than what we need. It is more than what we want. It is about the purposes of God and the plans that God has for our lives. You know you may want something, you may need something, but yet what God is planning for you and the purpose that God has over your life is bigger than a need, is bigger than what you want at the moment. So this is what Jesus was trying to tell us. That is why in verses 27, and follow me very well, see what he says, that how many of you by worrying can add anything to your life? So that means that God does not want us to worry over what we want, over what we need. He does not want us to worry over the desires of our lives. God provided we concentrate on the issues of his kingdom and we are established in his righteousness he is a God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask from him above all that we see many times what you want what you need is based on what you think in life is based on what you are asking from God but I want you to understand this that there is a God who supplies all our needs as Philippians says chapter 4 verses 19 according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus so as God begins to supply as God begins to meet our needs when we are in his kingdom and also in his righteousness he will do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or thought so child of god this is what i want you to understand jesus continues to say because we are seeing what what brings jesus to him saying seek fast because to some of you may think ah who has got no needs who is that person never wants or desire even me i have needs even me i want something even i desire things in life but i want you to understand this this life that we live in god it is more than a need it is more than what you want it is more than what you desire that is why christ is saying that life is better and your body is more why body we've seen that our bodies when we give our lives to christ jesus our bodies become the temple of the living God. And when our bodies become the temple of the living God, as 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 says, then now our bodies become a living sacrifice. That is what we've seen in the book of Romans chapter 12, verses 1. When our bodies become a living sacrifice, they become holy and accepted acceptable before the Lord which becomes a reasonable service now what is this reasonable service what is about this reasonable service that that Paul is talking about in the book of Romans the reasonable service that Paul is talking about is the way we begin to worship God God wants you to be a true worshiper before him because as the Bible says in the book of John chapter 4 verses 23 now watch this in the book of John chapter 4 verses 23 see what scripture says but the hour is coming and now this is the hour when true worshipers so that means that God is looking for true worshipers who are these true worshipers because the Bible is saying when but the hour is coming and it is now when the true worshipers will worship the father in spirit in truth for God is seeking for such to worship him so when your body becomes holy acceptable before the Lord and now because it is holy and acceptable before the Lord which is a reasonable service that means now you enter into becoming a true worshiper someone who can operate in the spirit someone who can move in godly ways and when you begin to operate in the spirit of God and also move in the ways of God then God is gonna use you to advance his kingdom on this earth so now Jesus is looking at something that the devil 
pen uses to disorganize very many people never to reach that standard of seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness for them to be true worshipers people who can advance the kingdom of God then he says which is so amazing look at this when he has said in verses 27 that how many of you can add a moment to your life how many of you can add to your life because of the worries see what he says in verses 32 in verses 32 it is amazing NLT version says that these things which things the needs what shall I eat how will my life be tomorrow how am I gonna make it how am I gonna live in this world things when you find a person in that state that person is unbelieving that person is unbeliever but you who is a believer you shouldn't be in such a state because the Bible is saying these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers but we who are in God we who have received the life of God see what scripture says but your heavenly father already knows all your needs so that means that by you that that is when he derives to verses 33 of saying seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto our lives so that is the part that many believers have been missing people are in salvation seeking what they want seeking what they need seeking what they desire yet that is not what we are meant to be seeking for do you have a need do you desire something do you want something in life that is added unto you when you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness in your life so now because the devil has brought in temptations in very many people's lives he uses this temptation because of what people want and desire and need and begin to give them not God the devil begins to give people what they want and what they need that is why James is saying that temptations come from your own desires which from our own desires which entice which entice us and drag us away then what happens that means that now as they are dragging you away the Bible says in verses 15 these desires give birth to sinful action and when and when sin is allowed to grow it gives birth to death that means that whatever the devil will ever offer you whatever you shall come in as a temptation and you yield to it it will destroy you it will bring sin inside of your life and it will bring death unto your life that is why as we've seen earlier Jesus teaching his disciples what to do when it comes to what they want in the book of Luke we've seen this chapter 11 beginning from verse 3 he's teaching them how to pray in other words he's laying down a principle that we follow as we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness for these other things to be added unto our lives because you know right, right now what God is looking for he's looking for a person who is mature in him who is ready to do greater exploits are you ready to do greater exploits you must be strong and you must know who your God is in other words when you don't know who your God is yet every time and again it is the person you're going to you have you think that God is about dealing with what you desire what you want and what you need yet it is about the plans and purposes that he has for your life he has greater plans for you he has greater purposes for you that is what the kingdom of God is about and his righteousness for you to begin to move in the plans of God and in the purposes of God in this world before you enter heaven so now Jesus tells his disciples if it is about daily bread and you've come in the presence of God and you're praying tell him to give uh, to give you your daily bread but see what is amazing because we've already seen all this in verses 4 as you want something as you desire something as you are in need of something he tells them that 
before God deals with your daily bread because you've asked it from him you yourself must enter into repentance which is forgiveness tell God to forgive you your sins and also to forgive others who have sinned against you and then what is so amazing and when you've entered into repentance repentance must help you not to be led into temptation but because many people have not understood the power that is thereof in repentance and listen to me very very well very many people have not understood the power that is thereof in repentance to very many people they think that repentance is about you confessing your sins Lord forgive me for what I did Lord forgive me for what I said Lord forgive me for every evil thought that I've been thinking about but let me tell you something repentance goes beyond you just confessing Lord forgive me repentance is about you returning to God you coming from wrong ways and entering into godly ways you coming from evil ways your evil ways and beginning to move in the ways of God in other words repentance us to a stage on a level of being right before the Lord and when we are right before the Lord that means now we are righteous and when we are righteous in righteousness we are established that is when oppression that is when terror that is when fear is far from us and because of repentance that brings righteousness in our lives but makes us to stand right before God this is when Jesus tells the disciples after asking for your needs which is daily bread now enter into repentance so that your life is made right in God so that your life is established in God's righteousness so that you are not led into temptation but you're delivered from the evil one so child of God the weapon of temptation that the devil uses to many people don't stand against his temptation they are led into the temptation and they are delivered into the hands of the evil one I'm here to say in the name of Jesus Christ God has never brought you into salvation for you to fall into the hands of the evil one through the temptation that the devil uses as we've seen that temptation is one of the greatest weapon that the devil uses do you know that through temptation what the devil does he bases on his lies what the devil does he bases on the lust, on the lust or craving of very many people and then he begins to offer people what they want and what they need it is very possible for what you want and what you need when the day also the devil can have it he comes where Jesus is after Jesus has fasted for 40 days and is angry and is hungry that is what scripture says and he tells him turn this bread turn the stones into bread he knew Jesus has the power to do that but because Jesus was in the spirit because Jesus understood that it is the devil who's commanding him to do that he overcame temptation child of God as I've said and I'm gonna speak it again we are all but you can of the only way you can overcome temptation is when you are in the spirit is when you are in the ways of God there is no way you can overcome temptation when you're not in the spirit so to people who don't know that the devil also supplies needs the devil also meets needs as God meets our needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus the devil also will meet your need according to what you're craving for according to what you're lusting after what the devil does that is the power of lies he operates in lies he is a liar that is what the Bible calls him in the book of John chapter 8 verses 44 he is a liar he's the father of lies and when he speaks lies as an ivy version says it is his language New King James version says that is his resource in other words lying to the devil is his language that is who he is so now he stands on lies and then he begins to make you crave over what you need he makes you to lust 
other things and now because of what you need and what you want results into desire and your desire when he meets it the Bible has said that these desires give birth to sinful action and now when you they give birth to sinful action sin grows which gives birth to death but all this as we've seen in verses 14 temptation comes from your own desires look at your desires today what are you desiring look at your desires today where desires and needs are and wants are so what you desire is what results into you being tempted so the devil that means every time and again when there is need in your life when there is what you want in life that is when he begins to bargain over our lives and child of God everyone is bargained over don't think that the devil has a special group he can't touch he will attack anybody he attacks everyone but what I love about God as we've seen in verses 12 verses of the Bible has says God blesses those who patiently endure can you endure can you hold fast and to what God has given you can you hold unto your godly given responsibilities and assignment can you keep your eyes unto God he is not slow according to the promises that he made over your life Peter says and I love what Peter says in 2nd Peter chapter 3 verses 9 NIV version because this is where people yield unto temptation they begin to say the Lord is slow God is not slow brother sister you always believe in God for a marriage he's not slow you always believe in God for a healing he's not slow you always believe in God for a provision he is not slow you will be always believe in God for a better career God is not slow concerning your finances God is not slow concerning your business God is not slow concerning your life temptations come in because the devil now when he uses temptation to sway away a lot of people he shows people that God is slow people have reached the time of saying God is slow one time there was a certain lady who spoke this statement and moreover she was a pastor's wife she said you know there are times when God slows up but I told God this statement after God had worked for me this is a pastor's wife saying this statement this is what I told God because he was so much slow but one time one day you'll find me dead because sometimes you're slow and I looked at this woman and I laughed and I said do you know that God is never slow so to many people the devil as is tempting them he shows you that God is slow God is slow to give you a car I can give you one God is slow to give you a career I can give you one God is slow to give you a husband I can give you one God is slow to give you a wife I can give you one God is slow to do this I can do this for you child of God as Peter has said the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness so you must understand this keep your eyes unto the Lord don't yield unto the temptation because of what you desire today because of what you need and want he will show up he will work for you but he needs your endurance so God as God meets our needs and what we want in life he becomes a faithful God who can't allow us to be tempted beyond what we can't bear that is what I love about God yes the devil will tempt us yes the devil may tempt you and the Bible has said has not said that the devil can't tempt us he will tempt you but watch this there are times when you are in God you're serving God faithfully you are a child of God you're believing God faithfully you look all around your life you're following the principles of God yet what you need is not yet met yet what you want is not yet is not yet given unto you and temptations come the devil trying to show you your past life the devil trying to show your previous life and he's trying to tell you tomorrow things 
things are going to be bad. See what happened to you yesterday. See what is happening now. Your God has not showed up. But now he comes in with this temptation. But I love this. Many times when we stick unto God in the midst of this temptation, you must keep on doing what God told you to do if you are to overcome. In the midst of temptation, you must keep on looking unto God and believing God more than ever before and keeping on your promises as a child of God this is what keeps you strong against the temptation so when God sees that the temptation is so big for you the temptation is about to overcome you remember that it is the devil behind the temptation so what God will do the Bible says in first Corinthians chapter 10 verses 13 in NLT version and God we're gonna pick it up from the second portion of that scripture the Bible says and God is faithful and that is why I'm here today to tell you there is a faithful God who is ready to see you through don't yield unto temptation don't yield unto the devil yes the devil is bargaining over your life yes the devil wants to take over your life but there is something greater God has for your life there is something big God has put down for your life there is something big God has laid down for your life in Jesus mother name greatness is ahead of you greatness is knocking at your door so child of God don't yield and to temptation stand strong your God is about to show up stand strong your God is about to show up stand strong your God is about to show up when you stand strong in God your God will show up when you stand strong in God you will overcome the evil one when you stand strong in God you'll be a testimony there are times when temptations become so big, so great over us. What do we do or what does God do? He comes in as a faithful God. And the Bible says the temptation in your life are not different from what others experience. So don't think that you are the only person who's going through temptation. What is happening to your life? You are the only one experiencing it. There are very many people the devil has tempted and they have overcome the temptations of the devil. You, why do you yield to his temptation? The Bible is saying the temptation in your life are not different from what others experience. But in the midst of temptation, when you've when you are in need of daily bread as Jesus has said ask the Lord that is what the Bible is saying ask him for your daily bread and then when you have entered into repentance in other words now you are right with God as verses 4 says you are with God this is when God becomes faithful and he can't allow you to be tempted to be tempted more than you can stand when you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. So there are times when you see people quitting ministry, for you keep on ministering. And even some ministers reach a level of telling you, mm, those things of yours, for us we are tired of them. And you say, probably there is, I'm doing something, uh, uh, there is something crazy upon my life. You are not crazy, you are standing strong. Let others quit ministry, you stay serving God. Let others quit on things of God, you stay believing in God. God is about to put a way for your escape in Jesus name he will show you a way and by the time he shows you a way by the time you come out of temptation you're gonna be a testimony on people's lips in Jesus name and the devil knows it very many times when need comes our way when we want something when we need something and yet it is as though God has delayed God never delays there is something much more bigger and greater that God is preparing for your life to enter in greater than what you need at that moment greater than what you want at that moment there is a bigger door of testimony there is a bigger door of miracles that your life is about to enter that is when the devil steps in to stop your life to enter that level I am here to say coronavirus came 
with a lot of things even including the temptations of the devil to show how weak the church is to show that God is weak but I'm a, are you listen to me this I'm speaking as a prophet of God this I'm speaking as on behalf of the heavens watch and see how church is gonna become after COVID-19 church is gonna be strong there is a lot of glory of God that is gonna be showered upon believers there is a lot oh my god that lot of glory that is what the devil is fighting no wonder today in this COVID situation very many people have fallen away very many people have given up on God thinking that God is weak God is not weak in the midst of temptation when you stick unto him he will come as a faithful God he's not just coming as a God but he's coming as a faithful God to provide a way for you to come out of the temptation but above all for you to be what his plans are and what his purposes are for your life in Jesus mighty name so as children of God in moments and times when we are in need and want our eyes must keep unto the Lord we must keep looking unto the Lord not unto the world today people have shifted their eyes they think the world is a solution it's a solution to their businesses it's a solution to their marriages let me tell you something this world that you see is under the control of the evil one this outer world that you see is under the influence of evil forces is under the influence of the evil one the world will never make you better the world will destroy you the psalmist says in Psalms chapter 34 verses 5 and I love this NLT version says those who look Look unto him for help will be radiant. What is that that you're believing God for? Look unto God. Believe God for it. God will meet, you will meet your need in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible is saying those who look unto God for help will be radiant. In other words, God is about to enlighten your life with joy. Do you want to receive the joy of the Lord from head to toe? God is about to shower you with joy in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible has said that those who look unto God for help will be radiant. In other words, they'll be enlightened with joy. And then what is going to be next? No shadow of shame will darken their faces. Fight darkness, child of God, in this season. Fight the kingdom of darkness, child of God. You are about to receive the joy of God. God is about to make you happy. There are very many things that have made you cry. But listen to me, child of God. What God is about to do in your life if you stay in him if you seek his kingdom if you seek his righteousness he is about to add unto you other things which you have not sought for let the unbelievers as the Bible has said in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verses 32 in NLT version let they seek what they want let they seek what they need let they run after their desires but you child of God seek the kingdom of God seek his righteousness when you seek his righteousness and seek his kingdom whatever you need is gonna be added unto you there are things you don't need to seek there are things that must be added unto you it is his kingdom that you must seek first and his righteousness that is when there will be no shadow of shame that will darken your face because you King James Version says their faces will not be ashamed I am here to declare God never brought you in salvation to ashamed you he brought you in salvation to receive joy God never brought you in salvation to be ever lacking 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 do you know the devil has used the need of money to tempt a lot of people people are in need of money every time and again even though today they got millions of money even tomorrow they'll be in need even the other day they'll be in need but I want you to understand this when you make God to be oh my God when you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness the psalmist says in Psalms chapter 23 verses 1 he 
becomes a shepherd do you want God to become your shepherd so that he can meet all that you need because that is what NLT version says NLT version says the Lord is my shepherd I have all I need seek first the kingdom seek his righteousness when you have reached that level of not seeking first what you need of not seeking first what you want because that is the result of what you desire in life God is going to become your shepherd Jesus will become your shepherd he will give you all that you need by adding it unto you by you not seeking it it is possible for God to add unto you so the way of overcoming temptation in your life is when you are in the spirit these are days of being in the spirit these are not days of moving and walking according to your flesh these are days of the spirit these are days of being in the spirit want to overcome temptation in your life the way to overcome temptation is in your life is when your life is in the spirit your life if you are to overcome temptation you must be in the spirit Matthew chapter 16 verses 16 Peter was in the spirit and he received a divine revelation about Christ Jesus that he was the son of God that was the greatest concern of God why does God tell us to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness God has needs God there are things he needs for us to do for him in this world he knows it that when you seek his kingdom first and his righteousness then you're gonna meet his needs that is why when you have met his needs he will also meet your needs so Jesus came on the earth his need was who can understand who I am who can know who I am that is why he goes first to ask verses 13 who do people say that I am in salvation and they don't know the God they are with people are moving in the life of salvation and they don't know what to do in salvation in other words they don't know the God they are with they don't know the salvation they are in now the disciples begin to give many answers look at verses 14 they begin to say you are John the Baptist you are Elijah you are Jeremiah you are one of the prophets see what verses 15 says and he said to them, who do you say that I am? That is the need of God today. Can somebody understand me who is in salvation of who I am and what I can do and what kind of God I am? That is the need of God. God is in need of a woman. God is in need of a man who can understand who he is. But the problem is this. When we came in salvation, we failed to understand God. We thought that God is about asking, asking, asking. But is why time and again when people come where God is I want this Lord I want this Lord and it is all centered about them not about the kingdom not about the righteousness of God here Peter Ribo in, that is why in verses 16 because Peter was in the spirit and follow me very well as I began by as I was saying before the only way to overcome temptation is when you are in the spirit don't think temptation is overcome by you eating from Monday to Monday without fasting without reading the word of God without praying without prophesying without declaring over your life without walking in the ways of God you must be in the spirit brother these are days of being in the spirit why what God is about to do that next level of glory where the church is going is a church of spirit filled people not of people who are gonna come and brag I have a car I have a woman I have a wife I have children I have a phone no 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 it's a level of the spirit God 
wants you to operate in the spirit no wonder people who have yielded unto the devil time and again he never finds you in the spirit when the devil never finds you in the spirit but is when you yield unto his temptation so now peter is in the spirit and when he's in the spirit he reveals who christ is that is the son of the living god and in verses 17 jesus responded to him this is not flesh and blood but has revealed this to you but my father in heaven now at this moment peter has been distinguished from other disciples other disciples are busy bringing reference of what people say and that is what has been affecting a lot of people you enter salvation but with the reference my mother my friend my relatives so and so say so it is not about god people are so much informed with what people say they're not informed with what the spirit is saying people are so much informed with what another person can say they're not informed with what is in the spirit but child of god listen to me god has opened up the heavenlies there are those people who are ready to move in the spirit and if you are ready to move in the spirit god is about to bless you because when peter revealed who jesus was the first thing that jesus answered unto him he said you are blessed you are blessed simon by jonah you are blessed do you want to be blessed step into the spirit and see and because peter was in the spirit it caused jesus to say in verses 18 and listen to me very well and i also say unto you peter on this rock i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail which rock was he talking about the revelation of who god is when you have received the revelation in your life as a believer of who god is you stand on the solid solid rock who is god no gates of hell can prevail against you no devil can prevail against you however much the devil attacks you however much temptations come your way you are strong because you know who you are and who your god is so verses 19 because peter is still in the spirit he's given the keys of the kingdom they tell peter you know whatever you bind on the earth shall be bind in heaven whatever you lose on the earth shall be loose in heaven for you are given i give you keys of the kingdom of heaven so peter is given the keys but listen to me very well child of god as i'm about to close the moment peter went out of the spirit oh my god the moment peter stepped out of the spirit what happened when he stepped out of the spirit that moment he stepped out of the spirit his life was swayed by satan his life was taken over by satan his life was overcome by satan can you imagine a person who has just received revelation because he's in the spirit now when he came out of the spirit he was turned to become like satan peter became like a real demon and he attacked jesus he has stepped out of the spirit in that moment another spirit took over child of god which kind of spirit is upon you because like it or not there is what they call the spirit of god and there's also what they call the spirit that comes from the evil one especially when it comes to what you want and need what kind of spirit is driving you to what you need what kind of spirit is driving you to what you desire what kind of spirit is driving you to what you want there is the spirit of god and also the spirit of the evil one now peter who had the spirit of god when he stepped out of the spirit of god now he went under the control and influence of a demon spirit which he began to follow and even to be obedient to speak what he tells him to speak and he began to be 
obedient and to follow now another spirit can you imagine a person whom before had the spirit of god to understand who jesus is now he stepped out of the spirit and see what happens as we are going to see on sunday paul tells timothy to be spiritually fit it is very important child of god for you to stay spiritually fit don't sing because god spoke to you years ago that that is it every moment every second you need him to speak every time every moment you need to be closer to him remember there is someone fighting you not to become what you are meant to become in this world and also to be who you are meant to be in God who is Satan he's ever watching over your life waiting for any opportune time to come in and when you are not spiritually fit that means there is another spirit that will take over you which you shall follow and be obedient to and begin to speak what that spirit tells you to speak and when your life reaches such a state first of all what that spirit does which is not the spirit of God is to take off your senses is to cover your understanding and when your senses are off when your understanding is gone see what is gonna happen that is when you enter into a state of being bound and when you are bound you're taken into bondage you begin to do things out of your mind you begin to do things as a confused person if it can happen to a person who is with Jesus physically what about you so child of God let me tell you something you need to be every time and again spiritual fit doing spiritual things that keep you alert and alive in the spirit so now when you have entered this church when you're not in the spirit and it is another spirit that has taken over you this is when you are you begin to lust over things that you need you begin to crave for them even though they have not come from god you accept them in your life yet it is the devil now offering you now as the devil continues to offer a lot because you've opened up a door you enter a state of bondage which leads to captivity and when you are a devil's captive you lack the knowledge of God in your life to do what is right that is when Isaiah chapter 5 verses 13 the Bible says therefore my people have gone into captivity because they don't have knowledge that is what the devil fights so much for people never to have the knowledge of God to know what to do even when it comes to what they want and what they need when you don't have the knowledge of God concerning what you want and what you need which results into your desire you're gonna be in a state of captivity you're gonna be in a state of bondage not having knowledge of what to do in life this is when the temptation come in of the devil this is when through temptation he begins to offer you things that you needed things that you wanted and you reach a time as Paul says Romans chapter 7 verses 15 for what I'm doing I don't understand this is when people begin to ask themselves what really went wrong with that man what really went wrong with that sister Paul is saying in Romans chapter 7 verses 15 for what I am doing I don't understand for what I will do I don't do what you're meant to do the devil makes sure you don't do it this is when people are tired of serving God this is when people are tired of praying this is when people are tired of sowing this is when people are tired of giving this is when people eat up their tithers what you're meant to be doing you don't do it then he 
says that I then he continues to say that I don't practice but what I hate that I do now you find yourself even what you used to hate before a person who couldn't do funny things now you're doing them a person who couldn't sit with sinners you are now with the sinners as some says chapter 1 verses 1 and child of God listen to me you begin now to move according to the counsel of the ungodly you stand in the path of sinners they find you a believer seated with a scornful no wonder you can talk with your pastor with other people now you have lost it the things you hated you have the things you're doing now a person who used to come to church you no longer come to church a person who used to believe in your pastor now you're believing in other things pastors are thieves that is what you begin to say yet one time one day you used to call that a man you used to call that man a man of god but now you are in the seat of scornful people you are in the path of sinners what you hated is what you're doing upon you there is a spirit you either have the spirit of god upon you that will lead to what you want you will have the spirit of god upon you that will lead you to what you need what you want what you desire oh there will be an evil force there will be a spirit and to many people who don't understand this is what many people don't understand that there the evil forces that is the last level of hierarchy when it comes to the kingdom of the devil principalities are there powers of darkness are there now upon you there is a spirit from the evil one making you now to crave for something yes you can't leave you feel as though you're gonna die unless you've received what you want do you know it is very possible when you want something when you need something but you have to be at it you're saying yes my god will supply but here when the spirit is upon you like what happened to peter he has stepped out of the spirit he has become a demon himself he's now a kenis, the things of god a person who had a revelation of who jesus was he stepped out of the spirit and we're gonna see how he stepped out of the spirit how he became very many people because you're out of the spirit now you've you, you entered the bondage of the evil one you entered captivity that is where your life is simply because of what you wanted simply because of what you needed everyone wants marriage but you you are just craving for marriage you are lusting for marriage there is a difference when someone wants a marriage and is waiting upon god and also to someone just craving for marriage no wonder also ever every man or every woman who comes your way and says i am the one you say okay let's go and as you things don't have okay let's go you are craving you're lusting for what you need don't allow to be drawn away your feet your marriage will come God will give you a better marriage than the one you want to enter right now he will give you a better career than the one you're lusting for right now and craving for for right now lust and craving are not from God whenever you are in need of something and you see although if you don't have it you're gonna die you definitely know there is something wrong that is happening over my life I'm trying to help you yes we all have needs but when you reach a time you are in need of something you are in want of something and if you don't get it you're gonna die I, I feel I'm gonna die if I don't get man I'm gonna die if I don't get a woman I'm gonna die if I don't get a man I'm gonna die if I don't get a job I'm gonna die my friend know for sure there is a spirit driving you to what you want and need but going to destroy God works in peace are you hearing what I'm saying? He works in peace. So to many people, they enter a stage of captivity and bondage because of what they want and need. That is when Ephesians chapter 2 verses 2 begins to say in amplified version that you begin to follow the course and the fashion of this world following the prince 
of the power of air you become you begin to be obedient and you're under the control of the demon spirit that works constantly in the sons of disobedience this is when your life begins to be careless things that you are careful over now you are careless you don't mind you don't mind about praying you don't mind about people you don't mind about tithing you don't mind about fussing you don't mind about doing things of god you don't mind about righteousness you do, you, your life becomes careless and your life is not only careless but you become rebellious unto god anything to do with god you begin to fight against it yet you are meant to accept anything that is godly this is when you find people say this brother must leave us this sister must leave the church this must not stand but they are telling you this must stand in church for your saying it must not stand we must come and pray at night we prayed years and years we must do this i've already done this you begin to fight against anything concerning god now you become you begin to be a rebellious person you stop whatever is godly because there is a spirit now it's busy pushing you the devil is busy now bargaining your life and he has finished to bargain your life because now he has held you is captive and you're bound by him you get a car you say you see in god i was not able to get all this yet whatever you've got is destruction and death the devil does not look at your end yet god looks at your end the beginning of the thing may be small but let me tell you in god the latter is much more better than the beginning he ever blesses us at the end more than the beginning which the devil never does at the end of everything that you receive from evil is death and destruction he will destroy everything that he has given you and the bible continues to say you begin to go against the purposes of God so when you are the devil's captive your life begins to follow the prince of the power of air this is when your life becomes obedient to every spirit the devil releases unto you your life becomes like a magnet anything evil can come to you can pile unto you slowly by slowly process by process you know there are two things when you are a captive this is when the captivity is seen but when you are bound it is a process he binds you through one need to another leading you to captivity this is when people think i got this yet what you got is going to lead you to another it's going to lead you to another and now when you're bound all of your life being bound this is when you're a captive this is when people see eh? look at that man and let me tell you something there are very many people who step on the pulpit who are bound that is when you can stand in public and begin to say a man who used to say divorce is wrong you say me as a man of god i have another alternative of divorce who are you to speak against what god has spoken that is captivity publicly to those who know god see you as a captive but to you because you are bound and now captivity begins to be seen publicly in public you are doing things that are so crazy but to you it is no more and because the devil is looking for a following there are people who will support you but also they have spirits from the evil one who are supporting you spirits from the evil one support each other no wonder to many people spirits are not cast off them spirits are just disorganized over them and people think the spirits went no wonder from january to january people think that you need a full year of deliverance who told you that those whom you think they're delivering you they're just exciting what is upon you but deliverance immediately god steps in the devil recognizes who god is he must leave 
deliverance is about so now because you are careless rebellious and you're, unbe you're unbelieving in God your life enters a state of going against the purposes of God you begin to fight whatever is not godly you can destroy the word of God who are you as a man to burn the word of God and destroy it for you think you're mighty yet you're captive and it is being now displayed publicly it has come from bondage now it is on a level of captivity that is when you fight things in church you fight things in people's lives that are godly whatever is godly in even in your home even in your family you fight against it because now you are following the fashion of the world and you are under the sway of the evil one see what happened to peter as i close because i had to give you all that background to show you how peter became a demon a person who has just been blessed by jesus a person whom the heavens have revealed and to him who christ is when he stepped out of the spirit child of god it is important it's not about any title you have in god it's about relationship in god it's about relationship keep your relationship good with god keep up being spiritually fit you will overcome bondage you will overcome captivity you will overcome temptations of the evil one. but if you're not spiritually fit today you're fit tomorrow you're not fit the devil will get an opportunity and he will come in in mercy where we've been chapter 16 verses 13 when jesus begins to ask who he was peter receives a revelation in verses 17 of who christ was now watch this as i close in verses 21 he's fallen out of the spirit when jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and raised in the third day look at verses 22 then peter <laughs> he's now a demon he has entered into a state of bondage and captivity took jesus aside and began rebuking him a fishermonger and a he is now rebuking jesus i used to ask myself where do people get strength to abuse people of god where do people get strength to abuse a man of god where do people get strength to fight against the things of god yet upon them there is a spirit which is not godly now peter is not he has he does not have the spirit of god he has an evil force upon him he has become satan himself he began rebuking jesus saying for it be from you this shall not happen to you a person who knew who jesus was he would have kept his spiritual fitness to know the next level where god is checking him he would have kept his spiritual fitness to know what god is about to do when jesus looked at satan and today because as he is so are we in this world when we keep the spiritual fitness we take off the old man and we become the new man in god who has the knowledge of who our creator is that is why we become like him in this world today if you can become like jesus i want you to begin to put satan behind you there are people have become demons before you and if you don't know that you're dealing with the demon and you're busy pleading with the demon a demon hears only jesus a demon hears only the spirit of god a demon only responds to god there are some people have become demons to you the bible says and he turned unto peter he said get behind me satan he never said peter let me tell you he knew very well the spirit that is upon peter is the devil himself he said get behind 
behind me you are an offense to me why do we become an offense unto God whenever we don't seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and we are mindful of things of men and we are mindful of things of this us we offend God he wants you to perform the things of the kingdom in your life he wants you to perform the responsibilities and the assignments that he has given you when the devil comes in the devil never comes in with anything concerning God he comes in things concerning the earth and things concerning you people will know that you are powerful people will know that you're great can you put behind things of men today and begin to concentrate on things of God so that he can meet your needs by adding them unto you he put him aside he said you are an offense to me for you you are not mindful of things of God but things of man many times when you put aside things of God definitely there is a spirit that will come upon your life to take you to push you to things concerning man things concerning your life yet they can be added unto you by God today I have come to deliver you there are very many people because of what you needed because of what you wanted you were taken into captivity you were taken into bondage by Satan but I stand as a prophet of God to deliver you the Bible says in Obadiah chapter 1 verse 17 that upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance what is this Mount Zion this is the church this is the place where God stands to deliver his people and today I stand on this mountain today I stand in this church I stand on this altar to deliver every man and woman whatever your life went into and your life was led into captivity and your life was led into bondage because of what you needed because of what you wanted and now you are a captive of the devil you are Satan himself fighting against the purposes of God in your own life it is you fighting against God it is you resisting against God I deliver you children of God in Jesus mighty name I break that bondage that has covered your understanding I break that bondage that has covered your senses may you come back to your senses in Jesus mighty name Satan came in because of what you wanted he came in because of what you needed he tempted you and led you to be his captive you devil listen to me you principalities you powers of darkness listen to me you rulers of darkness listen to me you evil forces listen to me I stand as a servant of God and I confront you Satan oh God of glory as you send me to bring your people from the hands of the evil one into your hands that is what I'm doing right now I declare deliverance in homes I declare deliverance in careers I declare deliverance in ministries I declare deliverance right now in Jesus name and him. today we may say that Peter is the pastor yes you may be a pastor also needing deliverance we all need deliverance from God it's not for only Christians or believers it is for everybody whether you have a title whether you're a bishop whether you're a reverend I declare deliverance upon you in Jesus name why is it that children of ministers are the ones who don't know God, are the ones who are drunkards everywhere? But you need deliverance in your home. I stand to say, in the name of Jesus Christ, you minister who is shedding tears because of your children. I deliver your children today out from those bondages in Jesus' name of alcohol. I deliver them out of marijuana. I deliver them out from drugs in Jesus' mighty name. Deliverance, even you are abroad, you need deliverance deliverance you desired so much to work 
you sold off things at home you got a ticket and went abroad because of the need of money and now here you are you are abroad you have never done anything but working from Monday to Monday paying your bills every day busy convincing people that things are okay yet things are not okay today in the name of Jesus Christ even you in the task be delivered be delivered in Jesus mighty name why should you work as a captive why should you work as someone who's bound in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Ghost let there be deliverance at work let there be deliverance in hospitals let there be deliverances in houses let there be deliverances oh my God everywhere as at the sound of my voice in Jesus mighty name you needed a marriage and here you are you are in a marriage and that man is making you cry that woman is making you cry ever since you got married there is no peace you are crying be delivered in jesus mighty name be delivered by the power of the holy ghost father god rich homes rich marriages rich families rich jobs and deliver your people let there be deliverance in jesus mighty name you said that that man loves me yet he comes once a while and he never comes back again he goes to another woman you need deliverance in the name of jesus christ father deliver relationships right now there are those who are in prison the devil took you to prisons there are places the devil has put you in and he has said that you will never build a house he has put you in a prison of renting you come from one place to another you busy say nigeria has developed then you go renting nigeria and another place develops you leave that place and shift you're shifting from house to house renting from house to house yet time is going I deliver you from renting may you own your own house in Jesus mighty name Father take people out of bondages right now take people out of prisons in Jesus mighty name by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ whatever the devil intended for bad I break it by the power of the Holy Ghost whatever the devil intended for evil over your life may the hand of God touch you as I raise my hand in Jesus name let there be deliverance right now in Jesus mighty name I establish your lives right now God's righteousness as the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 54 verses 14 but in righteousness you shall be established I establish your lives right now in the ways of God in the blessings of God by the power of the Holy Ghost in other words establishment is holiness in the name of Jesus Christ let there be holiness and where holiness is there is restoration I restore you people of God from what you are who you are denied in life I restore your lives in Jesus mighty name father let the power of restoration now reach every man reach every boy reach every girl in Jesus mighty name may God restore may God restore your lives in Jesus mighty name be restored be restored in Jesus name and after holiness Obadiah says then the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions I stand as a prophet of God to restore your lives right now and this is what I declare be restored may God meet all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus angels of provision begin to go where needs are right now and begin to meet the needs of the people oh God supply what people need what people want in Jesus name people of God receive your possession right now you're not receiving from the evil one you're receiving from God receive receive may God meet your need may God meet what you want in Jesus name as you're receiving your possession you're being restored be restored to your oh my God to that life of glory be restored to that life of blessing in Jesus mighty name and after your possessions have been possessed by you yourself 
I raise up my hand and I declare divine security upon what God is giving you. May God protect what he has brought down right now upon your life and you devil and your demons and your principalities and the powers of darkness and rulers of this age. Listen to me very well. You have no authority anymore over these people of God in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, as I raise up my hand, may your hand also protect the possessions of people. May your hand protect their lives in Jesus' name. Be restored. Be restored. Be restored. Be protected in Jesus' mighty name. May your life never fall to the temptations of the evil one. May the protection of God be upon you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. To God be the praise, to God be the glory. My God, my God, my God. What an anointing. Yes, the Spirit of God is still moving. The power of God is still moving. The angels of God are ministering unto you in Jesus' mighty name. Just touch your chest and say, I receive my restoration. I receive my deliverance. I receive my security. Go on seven times in Jesus' name. The first time I receive my deliverance. I receive my restoration. I receive my security from God in Jesus' name. The second time speak it. The third time speak it. The fourth time speak it. The fifth time speak it. The sixth time speak it. And the seventh time. Amen to what you've spoken in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Because the word amen means yes to the promises of God. Let it be so and to every man and woman that has declared it in Jesus' mighty name. It is so. These are your times and seasons to be delivered, to be restored, to receive your possession in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Yes, we give you praise, oh God. We thank you for what you've done for your people in Jesus' mighty name. Angel Michael, continue to fight for the people of God. In Jesus' name, we give you praise, oh God. Yes, today's our Wednesday evening service. There is that number that is running on the screen. You can get a hold of your tithes. You can get a hold of your offering. In Jesus' mighty name, and begin to give in the name of Jesus Christ. You can sow your seeds right now. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As I pray for you in the spirit. Renamata, he can pop up a pose at Taya, he yet a Keshika Tembruna Sakatae, he papa pabo Sakata Brodosa, he a papa papanda Brodosa. Father, bless every man and woman that are giving right now, and even those that will give later. May your spirit rest upon them, O God, deliver them, restore them, O my God, and protect them in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, God is a good God. Yes, God is a good God. Yes, God is a good God. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, thank you. Thank you for what you've done for your people this evening. Continue to touch them wherever they are. In the name of Jesus Christ, you're taking them out of prisons. You're taking them out of those places where they're not supposed to be. You're taking them higher and setting them on a greater level. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Protect them and be with them. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Yes, you lovely people. Every Wednesday you follow us. May God richly bless you and be with you till we meet on Sunday. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Have a great day. Have a great night. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is your season of deliverance and restoration and possessing your position in Jesus' name. God richly bless you. Bye-bye. will prosper what kills the new man in you whenever
than you man is not fed 